Hello, this is Bina Parmar, special correspondent with VC Circle, and we have with us Mr. Sanjay Sharma, the managing director of I Finance Limited. It's a six-year-old finance company that gives loans to micro and small businesses. Welcome, Mr. Sharma. Since you've just raised funds, you know if you could just begin with what exactly, uh, you know, is the purpose of the fundraising and how did you manage to do it during such a scenario? Yeah, see, uh, obviously in this scenario, one of the important uh, aspects is keeping ourselves liquid. That's the Correct. first thing. Or sir, take it to uh, uh, to play, hmm. and uh, the more liquid you are, the more it gives you buffer against uh, the number of months ahead because no one knows whether it's going to last for two months, four months, or nine months. Absolutely. So uh, I think we've also uh, recognized that quite early, and uh, that's why we started working on getting our liquidity up. In fact, we were working on it in in March itself, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, I think the fact that we have a long track record, almost uh, six years. Absolutely. And uh, the fact that we have done well, uh, we have uh, good investors uh, mm. backing us. Absolutely. I think all these uh, have helped us certainly in this time of uh, difficulty. Be nice that it has also not come at any any sort of discount. In fact, it is at a premium over the last round, which okay. was less than a year back. Right. So I think we've done well because uh, we managed to uh, carry a story where we are profitable, we are growing very rapidly, and uh, mm. the team obviously. Commands a lot of uh, respect in our industry. Generally, I mean, what's your take on uh, you know overall fundraising? You know, equity has been a challenge for many companies, and in such a scenario, mm-hmm. there are certain companies like yours who are managing to raise funds. See, for the industry, the funding position for uh, NBFCs remains tight. Sure. Despite the number of initiatives that the government has come forth. Hmm. Uh, Many of them, when it comes to execution, are being executed with uh, with less than the speed that one would have liked to see. All right. So things are moving, but they're moving slowly. Hmm. Uh, so if you ask any NBFC that how much money have you raised for any of the schemes, our numbers are not very large or not hmm. very substantial. That's but things are moving. One would not say that things ha- haven't moved at all. So we have also got some money under the partial credit scheme through uh, various uh, other schemes of the government. Plus, we have tried to raise money also through the normal channels uh, through de- developmental financial institutions outside India also. Mm-hmm. So we've tried uh, getting money from multiple sources mm-hmm. and not relied on just uh, what the government uh, schemes are, uh, are putting up. Makes and sense. that is important at this time because uh, mm. the government-related schemes uh, have needed a lot of pushing uh, when it comes to pushing the banks right, and, right. and, and nudge them along. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yet, uh, I think banks for uh, probably for right reasons, uh, when they look at their internal policies, mm. are averse to taking credit risk at this point. Correct. They're very liquid. No one can deny that they're extremely liquid. But the key problem is not a question of how much money do they have. It's a question of how much credit risk do they perceive. Correct, correct. So I correct. think banks have been slow and therefore one should not rely only on that line of uh, funding. It's important to raise, uh, keep raising money because it builds the liquidity buffer. Correct. Uh, it also uh, passes on a message to the market that uh, things are fine, things are moving moving along. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think uh, that's been our approach. In terms of uh, you know your business, of course, it's more focused on micro and small enterprises. And those are likely to be most hit, especially, you know, once the moratorium period ends, I'm sure that impact will be seen. So what is your outlook on the business aspect of uh, your company? If you look at uh, how we have performed, we have uh, today close to 175,000 customers. And uh, we have uh, uh, continued to get an NPA, which we uh, we have maintained an NPA, which uh, typically has been less than 2%. Sure. Now, given an environment where the banks and NBFCs have an NPO of mm. close to 11 to 12 percent, mm. especially in the micro and small and MSME segment, mm. that percentage is even higher. Okay. So even in that backdrop, we have been able to manage a much lower uh, delinquency number. Okay. Uh, why has that happened? One is that uh, the way you underwrite is important. Sure. While we use a lot of digital tools, and there's a, uh, I think. Uh, in terms of the uh, artificial intelligence models or machine learning models, our models are uh, no less than any, anyone else's. 
But at the same time, you still maintain a contact with the customer on the field. Hmm. And that helps in keeping that number one. That's one of the big reasons. Sure. Uh, very underwrite. Hmm. And there are many other reasons of uh, making sure that uh, we don't overlend to customers. Hmm. We check for the money being used specifically for the business purpose that were, it was taken and so many other things. All right. All so right. I think uh, that's the reason that our delinquency has been lower. Even today, uh, Bina, if you look at uh, what sort of moratorium numbers are we talking of? Uh, yeah. Uh, in the month of June, uh, hardly 25% of our customers took moratorium. We have a belief that our customers uh, are among the uh, selected uh, customers out of the micro-enterprise uh, world. And there are okay. six, 60 million micro-enterprises. So we have picked up the probably some of the best. Okay. And they uh, have very high levels of uh, intent to pay. Okay. And that's a demonstrated thing across the bottom of the pyramid businesses. MFIs also see very high intent to pay among their customers. How did you really filter those clients when you go for the clients? Sure. See, a lot of our cl- customers, we would categorize them as a uh, low impact of uh, COVID. Or okay. They, they don't see too much of impact. And we've done our analysis and uh, more than 50% of our customers fall in that category. Hmm. Uh, these are customers who have very small working capital uh, funding. Uh, they are into businesses which are uh, more essential items. So All right. someone who is a, a grocery store or a small trader uh, mm. trading in essential items. All right. Or uh, if, if it's, a, uh, it's a dairy, for example. Mm. These are customers who will bounce back quite quickly. Correct. And Correct. Uh, our customers also show that confidence that they will be fine. Mm. Uh, so I think these are the ones who haven't got impacted. Uh, sure. There are some customers who manufacture items, especially if the manufacturing is not uh, really the essential items. Hmm. And those are the customers who probably are the ones who have sought moratorium are more likely to be impacted. Sure. There also, uh, Mina, one has to be a little more practical. And in this scenario, hmm. uh, their need is uh, not really moratorium and a holiday from paying, but they actually need a lower amount of installment for a period of time. Hmm. Hmm. And some of the schemes that the government has come uh, come out with actually address that. Uh, as far as uh, fundraising is concerned, on the equity side, what will be the challenges? Because uh, now, I mean, debt raising would be easier. But uh, or rather, if you also have a you know view on how banks are looking at fundraising. Tivina, the uh, availability of funds will become far more circumspect. Okay. And uh, there will be a, a flight to, towards quality, which mm-hmm. is, uh, I think, quite intuitive. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's no, uh, no rocket science to that. Mm. Uh, so what does that really mean for uh, businesses, uh, typically NBFCs? One is that if you have a good track record of showing that you can deliver and you can execute your plans, and mm. it means both from scaling up, mm-hmm. increasing your volume, and also being profitable, Sure. Uh, you will probably find money. So uh, uh, the models which uh, talk of only growth and uh, say that you know profits will come when they come, uh, those sort of uh, lines will be more difficult to, uh, to uh, be convincing. Got it. So I think uh, I think a lot of investors will look at uh, which are the companies that emerge from this uh, uh, disruption and emerge with one of one is their portfolios intact and at least their execution skills uh, clearly demonstrated. So. Mm-hmm. As you could say in some ways, it will separate out the men, men from the boys. Sure. Uh, the second is that uh, in uh, in case of debt financing, hmm. um, what you will also see besides looking for quality of the entity, uh, mm-hmm. which is borrowing, hmm. I think there will be a tendency towards giving lower amounts. So earlier, if someone was uh, used to give a large amount, they will start becoming more conservative. Sure. And uh, uh, I think the... Uh, covenants will probably be more stricter. And right. covenants could be uh, if your NPA moves by such and such percentage, uh, the loan could be called back. Hmm. There could be requirements of collateral that might come in saying that uh, we want to see a little more collateralization of uh, of uh, debt. Right. Uh, this is going to happen, I think, in the short, sh- in the medium term. I would say probably in, a, in the next one year or two years. What is your uh, loan book as on today? And uh, what's the outlook now looking like? Uh, we have a loan book of about 1800 crores mm-hmm. and uh, this, this year, uh, this is as on March, March, March 2020. Okay. June numbers are not available. I mean, possible uh, to share those? No, I think uh, the numbers will be similar. 
Okay. Because we haven't uh, done too much of disbursement in this period. Got it. But I think we, we believe that if things settle down, hmm. let's say if things settle down by October or so, hmm. uh, we uh, could look at still a uh, 20% to 30% growth in our uh, business. Sure. Uh, because we normally are a company that uh, has been growing at 80-90%. Hmm. So okay. definitely not those sort of numbers, but I think 20% is a, is a growth which is possible. And in this scenario, Bhavna, if, uh, Veena, if anyone uh, provides a 20% growth yeah, in yeah. business, that that's wonderful. If you ask me that, yes, we do believe that we'll be profitable this year. Right. Uh, portfolio quality uh, has been, in fact, better than uh, what we modeled uh, it on for the, for, uh, the COVID disruption so far. Right. right. Uh, but no one knows whether the disruption is going to last till August, September or it's going to go into December. Not many of our investors are looking at exit at this point because they believe yeah. that uh, growth growth story is still still very much intact and there's still some good years uh, to uh, create value. Okay. But I think we probably see the same investors. Uh, our next round of equity, I think, likely is uh, going to take place about a year from now. All right. Okay. And, uh, you know, after this, uh, all the dust has settled and uh, everyone knows how businesses are doing. So that's when we will come come back for. I'm for sure it's difficult to share a number at this point in time. Um, not possible. You know, first thing is that even if we had a number, we ourselves have to feel very confident that that's the number that will stay. Mm-hmm. So I think uh, all I can say is that uh, our next round of equity, when we raise it, probably is going to be a $50, $50 million round roughly. Okay. Or bigger. And generally, how are you coping with the pandemic? And, you know, how are you even managing the employees, particularly and customers? Um, yes, again, a very important question at this time. Because, yeah. uh, you know, the, the news around that comes in from various consultants, so-called gurus of industry is all very negative. Gloom, Everyone gloom. thinks that, yeah, and especially for the micro-enterprise segment, the feeling is that everything will get wiped out. Correct. And honestly speaking, if six crore enterprises get wiped out, I don't know what, what's going to happen to, to India. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's important to keep your people uh, engaged and happy. We are uh, very fortunate that we are rated as one of the great places to work. Uh, and that helps uh, keep that engagement up. Uh, we've done many things to keep employees motivated uh, mm. uh, to the extent that uh, we have a radio station that we have started. Oh, interesting. Uh, it's called iRadio. Uh-huh. And it uh, broadcasts twice every week, talks about, you know, various things that are happening in various branches or people, what, uh, how people are coping, there, uh-huh. are, uh, there are quizzes, games, etc. So things like this. And there are many such uh, initiatives which are keeping people engaged. Okay. Uh, today we have uh, 173 branches across India and mm-hmm. most of the branches are operating. Uh, a lot of precaution has been mm-hmm. taken. As a business leader, you know, how have things changed for you working from home? Or, you know, how have things mellowed down in terms of the stress? I think uh, for me, I find that uh, I am far more busy at this time. (laughs) Because earlier, you know, uh, when you are working uh, physically in an office, uh, you meet people, you just uh, exchange a smile or say hi, and that's enough because Mm. uh, uh, that's some contact. But uh, in this scenario, you got to speak to people, do a one-on-one video calls themselves after the first one month, two months become very... uh, very boring and very predictable. So <laughs> many things have to be done. I think I have, uh, while I, uh, uh, I think uh, keeping contact with uh, your one downs and two downs is very important. Mm-hmm. But I've gone down to a level of, you know, even three, four layers down speaking to brand managers. Sure. Because everyone, uh, and, uh, everyone uh, feels happy when a uh, managing director of a company speaks to you and checks up, you know, that how are things Absolutely. Uh, at your end. Uh, yeah, we've done a right. lot of work in terms of recognizing people, sending letters out, commending people. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think that has uh, got a tremendously positive response from people. Mm-hmm. I think what the organization wants to see in their managing director is uh, that he should be unperturbed. He should uh, direct people, uh, give them confidence. And Absolutely. I think uh, that's what I want also my leadership team to do for their own teams. So that uh, they're seen as people who are... Uh, not uh, getting stressed over this. Things will right. pass. You've done well so far. Right. And uh, I think uh, people at the front line need to see that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It was nice chatting up with you. Uh, the best part was there's not too much of gloom doom despite the reality intact. Thank you.